Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Mr. Tony Stockwell. Tony, we're about to show a reading that you gave to a lady called Debbie. So, should we take a look and see what happened? Please. My name's Debbie Loveland. I'm 46 years old. I live in Beckingham, Kent. I'm very excited that Tony's come in. There are a few people that I would love to hear from, um, and I just can't wait to see what happens. Thanks Thank you for asking. Me. No problem at all. Thank you. Um, Debbie, as I, as I make a link for you, what I actually feel is a lady that wants to come in, first of all. Now, as my lady connects, she holds the hand of a man yeah. at the side of her. And I feel that both of these people had a real strong connection in life together. Mm -hmm. And I know this lady feels like a mum energy or a very motherly connection towards you. Okay. Now, um, I feel that your mother would have been ill before she died. And I feel that your mother would have uh, in some way uh, have, have taught you about feeling unwell before she went. Do you understand that at all? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I really feel that there was there wasn't much time to say goodbye to your mum. And there wasn't time for her to put things as she might have done. No. My mother wasn't ill before she passed away. She had a flu virus and it was really unexpected. I just popped in to give her some breakfast and found her she'd passed away in bed. So it was very, very quickly and such a shock for everybody. Sweetheart, I feel your dad is also in the spirit side though. Yes. yes. And I feel that your dad also passed before her though. Yeah. That's it. Because she keeps talking about going to be with your dad. Yeah. That's what she says. Yeah, definitely. And I, I get the sense here that when I say that mentally she was, a, a, you know, a bit upset, I just get a sense that she couldn't cope without your dad. And it was a real sense that she didn't want to cope without no, your dad. true. And so in, in, in effect, she was almost preparing herself for her transition to go and be next to your dad. When my dad passed away, my mum really didn't want to live anymore. She was just waiting to be with my dad, to join him. And she wouldn't be afraid to tell anybody. She, she just wanted to be with my dad. He was building her a bungalow there, she used to say. So, My mum and dad absolutely adored each other. They lived for each other. Um, they met at a young age um, at a school dance and they married and they would have been married 50 years this year. My father was a typewriter mechanic for many years. Uh, then he was made redundant and he had to um, get a job as a painter and decorator. So it was really handy because he did all my jobs. Come on, Dad. Now, um, I know that your father is here. I know that he helps your mum connect with you here today. <laughs> now, do you know a guy, right, that was like 37 when he passed? 34. So I'm looking at a man here, and I don't, I don't want a child, I don't want an old man. I get a man to me who looks around 37 years of age as okay. he comes here. Yeah. And I know there's absolute thing about his head that he is talking to me about. Okay. Now this man with the head problem didn't always have this head problem though. Oh no. That's it. Because no. I get a sense that there was a time when he was clear of mind and he was, he was absolutely fine. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. And then I get the sense it's all to my head as he comes in. I also get the sense that he was a good looking fella in his life too. Handsome yeah. looking man. Now he must know him to a degree because he keeps massaging your shoulders and he stands directly behind you yeah. and at the back of you there. And I know that this, this man's energy talks to me about you two sharing laughs and sharing fun and sharing a connection together yeah. as you did in the life though. He was my husband. That's fine. Because I get since they bring him in here for you at this time. That was my husband. He went into hospital for an eye operation. Um, he was severely brain damaged because the anaesthetist didn't do his job properly and he was in a coma for six and a half months. Your mum brings him in here to be with you. Come okay. forward, darling. I get a handsome looking man and as he smiles at me, do you remember him having dimples there in his cheeks? Yeah, I did, yeah. You sure? Yeah. That's fine. I know that he has he's passed a little while now for yeah. his connection, but this man has never forgotten you. Good. Never forgotten you. As he stands with me longer, I know that either a car has been important to him 
or the love of cars yeah. have been important to him. Do you know if he ever drove in his living or had to drive? He was a drive? panel beater. Panel beater. He, meant car he mended cars. In the cars, perfect. Because <laughs> all he does, he gets yeah. in and out of cars. That's all he okay. does, in my mind. Yeah. In and out of cars. That was wow, because he was a panel beater. He loved cars. We always had a lovely car. And he, he adored cars, he adored mending them, he, he really, that was his life. I met Alan at a wedding, I was chief bridesmaid and he was the neighbour. And it, we just danced all night and then we just was together ever since. Um, I have a younger energy with me, but it's another younger male. And I get the sense that if this man had survived, he would have been 48 years of age. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and as I know this man connects with me, can you tell me who that is first that of all? That would be my brother. Your brother, okay. Yeah. Would it be exactly 48? 48, exactly. yes. Good. Exactly. Excellent. And I know this man that would be 48 has also been watching over you in like a very protective way uh, since the time that he passed. And I get a sense that your brother would have gone really suddenly yes. to the spirit, really yeah. quick. My brother had haemophilia and he had a bleed in the throat and that was rather sudden. Um, my mum and dad was actually told to go home from the hospital and come and pick him up the next morning. And two policemen on the door the following morning to say that he'd passed. He passed away when he was three, so it was a long time ago. My parents were devastated. From what I'm told, I was one. And I see pictures of them, and my mum's as thin as a rake, so. She used to say to me, when I go, don't cry for me. You've had me all these years. Now it's your brother's turn. Now, um, he also goes on about the name of like M sound, like a Mark or like a Michael sound. Mark is, is my son. Okay, wonderful. So I, I know that they are very proud of your boy. Yeah, That's what I think. definitely. And I think he's very bright, your boy, and he's making something of himself. He's currently at university. To this side, wonderful. Yeah. And uh, I have, I don't want to be disrespectful against your family or anything to do with your family, but maybe he's the first one there or... Oh, he is. He is the first boy to go to university um, and that makes him very proud, very proud indeed. Very intelligent, very, must take after his mother. <laughs> <laughs> I know your mum is often in this room, but I feel she sits behind you in that, whatever is there, she sits in that corner. She does. In that corner. Yeah. She often sits there to watch you. Right. And to see what you're up against, to see what you're doing. She always sat there. Oh, wonderful. And she came here. Excellent. She feels that's her space yeah. in the room. That's yeah. what I know. That's where I sit over there. Yeah. She lived with me for a while and that was her chair. She sat there whenever she visited me, she sat there. And yeah, that's where I would imagine her to be. I know it's only words, but um, your husband comes again and he keeps saying, just tell her I'll always love her. Tell Aww. her I will always love her. Then is it 14, it's not 14 years, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is it 17 years that he's passed? Yes, yeah. Exactly 17, 17 years? 17 years, 12th of July. Okay, that's fine. I just count, and as I count through my mind, I can feel 17 years that he's been in the spirit world. Right. And I know during these 17 years, he's watched you every day. Please take his love and also extend it to your boy. Okay. As well. And I'd say, God bless you, darling. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Bye. Thank you, darling. Thank you. I now feel that I know my mum and dad and Alan and my brother Tony are with me and it gives me strength in this life and it's fantastic to know that there is an afterlife. <laughs>now Debbie obviously had a lot of family members queuing up to communicate with her. Do you sometimes find it difficult, Tony, to, to separate the communicators when there's a lot of people trying to get through? It, every reading's completely different. I mean, I actually enjoyed uh, Debbie's reading immensely, and I think that uh, during um, her reading, it was her mother, her father, her husband, her brother, they all came in, but they were all really well organised, and they sort of almost lined up one after the other. So for me, it was easy enough. I didn't mind it. So when you do get one where they all seem to try and come in together, do you have a technique for 
requesting that they separate themselves? Do you know, I do. It's, it's simple enough. I think that in this world we, we're quite used to communicating with each other and telling each other what we need. And I do exactly the same thing with the spirit people. So uh, if, if I have maybe two or three people coming in at once, I'll say, well, can you actually stand to one side? And you stand on my left, you can stand on my right. Yeah. You may can stand in front of me. And I speak to them and they, they, they help me in that way. Well, Tony, thank you very much for coming along today and sharing this reading with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Stockwell. <laughs>